All right, so I want to take a couple of minutes and talk to you a little bit about um, kind of a technique that you can add into uh, your your meal planning, your fat loss routine. And I, you know, I don't want to call it a hack or a secret or anything like that stuff because you know I, I hate uh, using that kind of a term for this. Um, but it's called protein sparing modified fasting, and sounds like it, it might be kind of complicated. It's not really, uh, you know, when you when you boil it down into simple terms. Basically, uh, the point of protein sparing modified fasting or PSFM as, as we usually abbreviate it for is basically you're going to go down to eating the bare essentials of really just protein um, and then you can fill up on non-starchy vegetables uh, to help keep yourself full. Uh, so you want to minimize any carbohydrate intake um, and, and you want to stick to you know lean meats, um, eliminate cooking oil and so you're really just dealing with some trace uh, quantities of fat. Um, so usually what I'll do on these days, you know, when I do them, is you know stick to big portions of you know usually chicken breast, you know fish, shrimp, things like that. You know nice lean proteins, and then I'll make either like a big salad, a big giant bowl of salad, or another thing I like is, is stir fries. Um, you know just using pan spray. Uh, but generally speaking, with you know, PSFM, you're going to want to use this in, in one of two scenarios. Um, and I'm going to talk about what I use it for more so than, than the other scenario because I think it probably applies to more people. And so it's a little bit more beneficial to talk about. Um, but I use it on my non training days, so days that I'm not going to be going to the gym and lifting weights. Um, I'll, I'll eat this way. And doing that, it really kind of allows you to you can take two different approaches with it depending on you know your goals and where you're at in your in your dieting process uh, you know how lean you are um, so on one hand you can use it to be a little bit more aggressive with your deficit um, if you want to and if you're just starting out on your diet it's that's a good time to do that um, you know as you get leaner obviously you got to be more and more careful with your deficit because you're going to run into run the risk of losing muscle. So, you know, as you get down below 15%, closing on 12, you know, 10%, um, you, you gotta start being more careful with that. Um, but, uh, you know, if, if you're just starting out, you still got a little ways to go, you, you know, you can, you know, say, you know, your maintenance is at 3,200 calories and you're gonna, you know, set your, your, your calories on, you know, that you're, typically shooting for on a daily basis, say you're gonna shoot for 2,600, you know, just as a, you know, general number to, to hit your weight loss goals, you know, doing the PSFM on your nine training days is actually gonna make your deficit for the week a little bit bigger. Uh, so it kind of helps kind of supercharge your results. Um, the other time that you would use this is, uh, or actually, let me back up. Um, so we can use this for, like, like I said, making your deficit a little bit bigger, or as you get leaner and you have to start being a little bit more careful with this, you know, the, the size of your deficit and how quickly you're losing weight, you can use PSFM um, to actually be able to eat a little bit more on your training days. Um, so, you know, at that point, you're, you're, you're getting leaner, you're having to cut your calories a little bit, um, you know, obviously, you're on, on those days where you're lifting weights, you might be a little bit hungrier. Doing PSFM on your days off from training, um, you can eat just a little bit more because you've got the, these two days, um, or you know, however many days a week that you're not training, um, where you're eating really just bare essentials. So um, that, that's another nice thing about it. But the other scenario that you would use PSFM for is if you've got a significant amount of weight to lose. Um, and you know, and I'm talking if you're a man and your body fat percentage is over, say, 25%, and for a for a woman, um, say, like over 30%, just as kind of some rough guidelines, uh, you would start out on protein sparing modified fasting um, just to get you below those thresholds uh, as quickly as possible. 
And then once you get under, you know, under 25% for a man, um, you, you would want to get to a more kind of conventional uh, meal plan setup where, you know, you're basing things on, on a more standard deficit of, say, 20%. So how do you set up, you know, a day of eating for protein sparing modified fasting? Um, generally you want to shoot for about a gram of protein per pound of body weight. So it's a little bit more than you, you might be eating uh, on, on a typical day. Um, and then just, you know, keep in mind if you're in that second group where you've got a, a lot of weight to lose, a gram of protein per pound of body weight might be, it might, that might be a lot. That might be excessive, um, for you. So if you're in that scenario, shoot for, you know, whatever you've kind of got set as, you know, a, a healthy body weight that you're trying to get to, whatever that number is, that's how many grams of protein. So, you know, just, you know, just to say, you know, say, say you weigh 300 pounds, you know, eating 300 grams of protein at that point, that, that's too much. Um, but say a healthy body weight, not necessarily, you're not trying to look like an underwear model or anything like that. But just you want to get down to a healthy 220 pounds, 220 grams of protein or thereabouts uh, would, would be a reasonable amount for you to shoot for in that scenario, just as an example. Um, so a gram of protein per pound of body weight, um, which you know, if you weigh 200 pounds, that's 200 grams of protein per day. Um, that's only 800 calories. So again, it it kind of goes back to how aggressive you want to be. Generally, when I do these days, um, I'm coming in between 12 to 1400 calories. And th those are probably lower than I really need them to be. Um, you know, I could probably go more like 1600. Um, and, you know, and just uh, as a reference point, you know, based on the research data, um, as far as what they found to be kind of sustainable with using, you know, protein sparing modified fasting as an approach you know, to weight loss is they, they found you generally want to allow about eight calories per gram of protein that you're eating. So again, if you're 200 pounds, it's 200 grams of protein per day. That gives you about 1600 calories that, that you can budget for on those days. Um, you know, and if you're able, you know, if you're only doing this two days a week and, and you feel like being a little bit more aggressive, which is generally how I try to do it, um, you know, and you're filling up on broccoli and, and things like that, and hunger's not an issue, you know, push through it. Um, but, it, you know, if you're in that second group, you got a, a lot of weight to lose. Obviously, sustainability, if you're going to be eating this way, you know, every day for, you know, a couple weeks or so, um, you, you need to be a little bit more mindful of how sustainable this is for you to do. Um, so, definitely think in terms of, you know, that eight calories or so per gram of protein because um, because otherwise you're going to be ready to eat your arm off um, after a little while. But, uh, you know, th this is just this is something that, that I've used that, that helped me kind of turn things up a notch a little bit to speed things along um, and really maximize progress. Um, they, they can be a little bit of a challenge mentally, especially at first, um, you know, a big thing that you get into is learning food choices that uh, kind of maximize satiety and, and fullness, you know, so, so you're not dealing with hunger so much. You know, broccoli is a great one. Broccoli really fills your stomach up, uh, keep, keeps you full for a little while. Zucchini is a good one. Um, you obviously, you know, any non-starchy vegetables are, are good. You know, be careful about things like carrots. Uh, you know, obviously carrots are packed with a lot of sugars, root vegetables in general. Um, you know, one thing that, you know, I've liked to do just to kind of help with the hunger aspect, there's the high fiber tortillas. You know, they're generally just made out of whole wheat flour, maybe a little flax seeds in them as well. Uh, but they're packed with fiber, I think. You know, the ones I buy, I can't remember if they're the extreme wellness um i don't remember the brand name haven't bought them in a while but uh you know i think they've got usually about 12 grams of fiber per tortilla and they're you know they're just a little like six to seven inch tortillas they're not very big um 
you know, taking one of those, you know, if I'm getting a little hungry at in the afternoon, just roll it up and eat it as a quick snack, you know, just getting that fiber in, um, really kind of staves off hunger and, and certainly helps me a lot. Um, but yeah, definitely, you know, fill up on veggies those days, uh, use, you know, use the pan spray, uh, you know, if you're cooking anything in a pan, uh, as much as you can try to roast stuff that way you don't have to cook with any oil at all. You know, definitely stay away from olive oil, things like that. Um, for your proteins, you know, stick to lean stuff, chicken breasts. Um, one thing that I typically eat a good amount of is, you know, lean fish like barramundi. Um, flounder is okay. I mean, it's lean, but flounder also tends to be kind of a waterlogged fish. You have to eat a lot of it to get any real quantity of protein. Um, I don't really like shrimp all that much, but, uh, you know, shrimp is a good one. You know, it's lean and there's something about shrimp that's kind of fun to eat on, on days like that. Um, but, you know, mix it up a little bit. You know, maybe you make a you know big bowl of stir fry with your protein for one of your meals. And then um, you can do something like cottage cheese. You know, cottage cheese is okay. Um, you know, and again, you've got, you, if you're smart with what vegetables you're using, you've got a little bit more calories to play with than you necessarily need. Like, you know, like I said, I typically always come in under my, you know, calorie allotment. Um, but, you know, you, if you're going to have, say, a cup of cottage cheese, a half a cup of blueberries or raspberries on there, I mean, that's okay. Um, you know, obviously stay away from any dried fruit or, you know, anything like that. That's, those are calorie bombs right there. Um, but you know, those are things that work really well for me. Um, uh, try it, might help you out a little bit.